This is the plaintiff, Marcus Jackson. He says he was visiting a friend who lives on the defendant's property. And as he was driving through the gate, it swung closed and clipped his car. The force of the broken gate scratched and dented his car. The defendant promised to pay for the repairs, but the liar hasn't. So here they are. He's suing for $2,077.05, the cost to fix his busted car. This is the defendant, Luani Fang. He says the plaintiff originally sent him an estimate for 225 bucks. Now he's suing for over two grand? Ha! This guy's looking for a huge payday. He has no proof the gate hit his car. He doesn't even believe his story. And he won't pay for something that never happened. He's accused of refusing to take responsibility. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says he was going through the gate of a building and it swung back and hit his car, damaging it, and he's suing the defendant because the defendant manages the building. The defendant says the plaintiff has no proof. It's the case of gated communities aren't so safe. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Jackson, you had the misfortune of driving through a particular alley one day, and what happened? Okay, uh, November the 1st, I was going to go to visit my friend and I had just turned into the alley and within maybe 10 to 15 seconds, something jolted my car, boom, a loud sound. So I'm thinking somebody hit me from the back or threw something. So I stopped, I get out of my car, I looked, I see this fence that hit my car from the a property. A fence had hit your yes, car? Yes, a steel fence that hit my car, the side quarter panel of my car, which okay. is the property that Mr. Lewani manages. Okay, so. I didn't know who owned the property, so I got out. It's a, okay. tri it's a triplex, so I went to... Let's let's hold on hold on one second. Is, is this your car? Yes, it is. Is this a picture taken when this happened, or yeah. did you recreate it? No, this is when it happened. Okay, so it swings open it like swings that. It swings open. All right. When you were driving, you didn't see an open fence. No. Right? And then as you're passing it, it swings open... Yes. ...and hits yes. your car. Okay? Okay, so... Uh, where the complex is, it's a triplex. It's three units, okay? Uh, I didn't know who it was, so I went to the closest unit to the fence, which was Mr. Jeffrey Lancaster, okay? Uh, he wasn't there, so I left my name and number to get in contact with me. The following day, hit Mr. Lancaster got in contact with me, told me that he would contact Mr. Lawani about this incident. So in, in Okay, the now you own the place? No, I helped manage it from um, the owner's Douglas Rucall. Douglas Recall. Are you Mr. Recall who owns that place? No. Okay. <laughs> Who's that young man? It's my son, Eli. Okay. So you have no ownership interest? No. Okay. When do you folks first hear about a problem with the gate? Um, so about a problem with the gate was probably um, around that time when... Yeah, I know gate... it's around that time. Yeah. I'm saying, do you hear about it from him? Do you hear about it from your tenant? Or how do you hear about it? Um, I think I hear from from him first. He from said him he, first. Yes, I think he let. I, I think so. I'm not. I'm not exactly sure on the timeline, but I got a, a voice message from him, and um, that's how I, I think it started. Had any of the tenants told you that there was a problem with the gate before you heard from him? I do not recall exactly on when exactly, but I did hear from well, a these tenant. Are the, this is, these are like the only <clears throat> things that matter. Are the questions I'm asking you right now? Did any of the tenants tell you? Uh, and if so, when did they tell you that there was a problem with the gate? So one of the tenants told me that uh, the chain and lock from the gate was stolen. When did that tenant tell you that? Um, was it, it before or after this accident? Uh, it was probably um, before. And if it was before, how long before was it? For, not from the accident, from the time I heard from him, because I don't know exactly what day that happened. Okay. okay, what day did that happen? Okay, that happened on November the 1st. Okay, stop. That okay. happened on November the 1st. So okay. when did you hear from him? From uh, my recollections in terms of hearing him, it was from him, um, yeah. from this, um, November 10th. Okay. Now, what did your tenant tell you when your tenant called you about the, the gate or the lock or whatever else? So the tenant says that there was no um, lock on that gate and that um, it, with the wind, it swung open. And then, so there's two tenants involved. One is the one he, he's mentioning, Jeffrey Lancaster. 
And then the other is the tenant that actually called me, the one that um, I guess got the the chain lost or stolen or something. That what happened. do you mean got the chain lost or stolen? She she was when she was telling me she was saying that she went in because we we put up there was a chain and lock on that gate. We put a new combination one for for the tenants. She called me and says that when she was pulling into her driveway, she unlocked it. And by the time she came out, that chain and lock was stolen. This happened on probably like on, if it was November 1st, like around October 31st, October 30th, somewhere around there. Okay. Do you have an affidavit from that tenant? No. Do you have any texts from that tenant telling you the things you're saying? No. All right. You want him to, how much damage did that end up doing? 2207. Now, originally he only asked you for how much? $225. Oh. Okay, how did it go from 200 and something to 2200? I have a friend that my brother has a car club. Okay, he does custom body work. He, by me being my brother's friend, he was gonna do it for me for a cheap price. When Mr. Wani brushed me off, I said, okay, now I'm going to the I'm dealer going to and the getting dealer. 10 times I'm that. going right. to the dealer. So I okay. took her to the Jeep dealer, and that's the price that that's been Well, did you pay it and get it done? No, I, I oh, haven't took it Because if I award you 2000 something, you're going to your friend for 300 right? And then Bonanza no, I'm going for to you. The Jeep ching, ching, let the cash register ring. <laughs> so, and then I went and got three other estimates. We for have it. to figure out whose fault this is. Okay. I know whose fault it's not. Yeah. Everyone knows it's not your fault. Okay. But what we have to figure out is whose fault is this? Who is at fault? You're here representing the landlord. Correct. Is it the landlord's fault for not getting on the gate issue faster? Or is it the tenant's fault for not locking it? Tell me that story again, that the tenant didn't lock it and what? So she calls me um, around the 31st or November 1st saying that she pulled into like kind of like that driveway. You have, to, you have to open it. And she pulled into her driveway. She said she was leaving, um, getting her nephews or nieces out of the car. And by the time she came back, this was in the, in the, at night or in the evening, the chain and lock has been stolen so she didn't lock it. So there was a kind of a hole that you tie it around to, to lock that gate. So she called me the next day and said, hey, you know what, this is stolen. So I told him like, well, you gotta get an, an, a replacement one. Did she? She did. And? And so it was replaced. Then afterwards, I'm like, okay, so why is it swinging open? That's when also um, his things were like, why Wait, is it-, is it swinging open after she replaces it? No, I was just thinking okay. like, okay, since he also called saying that this thing was going on. So I'm like, okay, so what's going on with this chain and lock and how do I prevent, how do we prevent it from being stolen again? Or this has never happened before. So all of a sudden this chain got stolen or- and Right, so- but then she replaced it? She replaced the chain temporarily. Then I called someone to go and fix that gate and put a, um, an actual double cylinder lock okay. so that you can. Do you have anything from the tenants? Yes, I do. Uh, May I where, see what you have? Where he said his tenant had warned him on the 30th of October that. He said 31st. Uh, no, it was the 30th that the lock came missing. Okay, hold on sh- one second. Did you say 31st or 30th? I said around the 30, I'm, I'm, when she called me was around the 31st and probably happened on the 30th. Remember she called me on afterwards. Okay. Now, according to you, the tenant advised him of that when? Uh, on the 30th that the lock How was, do you know that? Okay. The tenant is my friend. Which one? Jeffrey Lancaster, his tenant. Okay. Is oh, your friend. Yeah. And of course, so let me see what you have from Jeffrey Lancaster. Okay. On Friday, November 1st, between the hours of 3.30 and 6.30, the back gate, which is accessible to me and the middle tenant, was left open for several hours. I was not home all day. I didn't return home until around 8.30 p.m. The lock and chain was stolen the night prior on Thursday, October 31st. So nobody's saying October 30th. Thursday, October 31st. And sometime around 3.30, my camera alerted me, 3.30 p.m., my camera alerted me to motion or noise outside the driveway. When I checked the camera, I saw the rear gate completely wide open, swinging back and forth into the alleyway. I called the middle tenant, and I didn't reach anyone until around 6.45 or 7. I asked, what time did this happen to you? 
around 315, 330, something On like. November 1st? Yes. According to your own witness, it wasn't even stolen until Thursday, October 31st at night. Yeah. Okay. When I arrived at home, I called Luwani and advised him of the situation. So your tenant, Lancaster, advised you on November 1st. Luwani then informed me that he was out today at the residence to put a new lock onto the gate. So your witness says that he was out putting a new lock on the first. Does that sound right? I, so he, Jeffrey Lancaster, he called me. I called um, the middle unit, which is the one that lost that chain and lock to see what was going on. And so I told Jeffrey I was going to go over there and put a chain and lock. I did not. I asked actually the tenant since she's the well, one. How do you know she did it? Because um, I had to reimburse her for that lock in. Do you have the receipt that she gave you in order for you to reimburse her so I can see when she bought it? Um, no. Why do you come to court empty handed? I. Yeah, seriously. You came to court completely empty handed. <clears throat> To put a new lock onto the gate, he apologized to me that he forgot to tell me the combo to the lock. Humber what lock. are you apologizing for? Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff says the damage to his car was caused by a gate that didn't lock properly, but the defendant says he did everything to get the lock replaced. And besides, he's just the manager of the building. Let's go back into the courtroom. When I told him about the apology was about that lock even before this happened. There was, a, there was a lock already in there for the tenants. The new tenant, the one in the middle, she came in. I gave her a key to that lock that Jeffrey Lancaster already had. So this was even before this incident happened. She lost that key. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to go keep on going with replacing keys. So I put a combo lock on it. When? This was uh, when she moved in. She no, moved when? In. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know when she moved in. When did you do that? Middle of October. That's when she moved in. So why are you apologizing to Jeffrey? You didn't give the other tenant the combination? To Shoot, Jeff that thing didn't get stolen. Jeffrey cut it off. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, I was just apologizing for something that we, that's the first time we were talking about something that happened pr prior. <clears throat> now, when that, when she took out that lock in this incident, that was the combo lock that I had. Why did that gate swing when he drove by? Because someone had stolen it the day before? Or because what? So first is, there's many locks that were put into this gate at various times. When this incident happened, the lock that had been there was a combination lock that I put in there. Okay, that you had put in there when? I put in there on um, October. Um, Mid-October. Mid-October. Okay, and what had happened to that lock that so, allowed the gate to swing? The tenant saying that when she opened it, she left it unlocked to bring her car, her she car left in. It hanging, she left it hanging, dangling, and someone stole it. And someone stole it. Okay, she tells you that when? On October 31st? No. She, she tells you that when? She tells me that probably like on November 1st after okay. I got- Okay, so got she tells you that on November 1st, and then you tell her go buy a lock right now. Correct. And did you, this hadn't happened yet. But your memory is that it had already happened when you told the tenant yes. to go and get yes. the lock. Because I, the way I found out that they didn't have a lock was from Jeffrey Lancaster giving me a call. Telling you that his friend's car had been hit. No, not th that's not his friend's car, that he said that some guy was there and that he saw that the gate was open. He's like, I did not see the car or anything like that. Did he, he saw, say any car had been hit? He says that um, Mr. Jackson is saying that his car got hit. But did you like, know they were friends? No, I did not know they were Did you friends. learn that right now in court? Yes. Isn't court interesting? <laughs> All right. When do you put the lock that we know you put that's there today? So now there's no lock. Now it's a, a key kind of um, cylinder thing. So there's no more padlock on it, okay? So that's what um, I brought this pictures of now. How when did you put that is my question, when? We did this um, probably the uh, middle of November. Okay, and what was in on it between the time you were alerted, which you say was after the hit? Tell me what was on that. The 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 chain, one you made the, the tenant buy. Exactly, the chain and the lock that the tenant bought. So you have two letters from Mr. your Lancaster. friend, Mr. Lancaster. Yes. Let me read the second one, which is authored in February. 
He says he notifies you November 1st that there's no lock. He confirms that the other tenant purchased a lock and chain and put the lock and chain on the gate until Mr. Fong arrived to put his lock and chain onto the gate. So let me ask you a question. Your feeling that the landlord needs to pay you $2,000 is predicated on the fact that the landlord did something wrong. That's the only way that they would have to pay you the, the $2,000. Okay. Tell me what you feel they did wrong. Okay, let me... Because the question okay. is, did they hop, skip, and jump fast enough? Okay. And what we're talking about is 24 hours. Okay. So you tell me what they did wrong, because they're not, you know, they're not magical. Right. They can't, they don't have a magic wand to fix something in, in, the second the phone call comes in at right. night. Right. So tell me what they did wrong. Okay, let, let me get to the chase. Your tenant, the middle tenant that lost the lock, she moved in between the 23rd and the 25th of October. Okay, I even know her. What do you mean lost the lock? No, the she, lock moved, got she stolen. moved in. Okay, when she moved in. On the 30th, her sister and a bunch of friends came in from Long Beach, was at her house. Okay, her sister took the lock and chain with her to Long Beach. That's how do you, why. How, this is all hearsay. How, would, I, no, how do you I know what to, you're I, saying? I talked to the tenant, her, the middle tenant. I know her. Okay, and what? She told you my sister's a thief? No, she told she accidentally took it. How do you accidentally take a lock and chain? Hey. Wait, 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 you know, you put it in your pocket and forgot about the lock and chain? Okay, yeah. I know. Okay, this do you what, have any of this in writing anywhere? No, I, well, she's hard to catch up with. She's always in L.A., and I live in Lancaster. So, okay. you know, this is what she told me. She accidentally took the lock. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I ain't even tripping, you know. So what happened was Lancaster and her was getting into it about the can, lock. Can you tell me the things I'm, I'm interested in? Okay. Which it, well, not that I'm not interested in that, because that's fascinating. <laughs> but what I am interested in learning is what did the landlord do wrong? Is, tw is it your position, legally speaking, that 24 hours isn't fast enough? No, it isn't, because this happened in November, and I reached out to him when I finally got information again in time could wait him. Okay, we talked about it. I told him that I had a friend would do okay, it. None, okay, you're talking about other stuff that has nothing to do with well, my I question. Well, I feel he was negligent. Right, but it, you believe he was negligent how? Okay, because he never responded back to me. Okay, no, that's rude. That's not negligent. That's rudeness. Negligence is what happens that causes the bad thing that happened to you. So the question becomes, is this the tenant's fault? because her sister took the Glock and this other thing's swinging, maybe you should sue your friend. See, the question is, does a landlord respond in what is a reasonable amount of time? And if the landlord waits weeks, that's not reasonable. If the landlord waits days, that may not be reasonable. If the landlord waits 24 hours and is calling and hustling and trying to get your friend to put a lock on it, um, making her buy it because it was her fault, what did the landlord do wrong that the landlord would have to end up paying for the damages to your car. What did they do wrong? If the lock got stolen, and then they see to it right away that another lock is put on there, and, and the lock got stolen, apparently, according to you, by the tenant who's informing him, sister, who takes it accidentally to another place. I mean, yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah. But if they do it within a reasonable amount of time, you're out of gas. So why is 24 hours not a reasonable amount of time? I'm not even sure it was that long, but let's assume that it's 24 hours. That sounds to me like a reasonable amount of time. And so it's not that you did something wrong. You didn't. It's that they're not the right people to sue. They have to, just because they own the property doesn't mean they owe you money. They have to have done something wrong, like not acted within a reasonable amount of time, not maintained the property, not to, but if a tenant is nutty, and has her sister putting the lock in her pocket and is right, you know, and that's not the landlord's fault. You've got a righteous case against that tenant whose family came in from Long Beach and decides they're gonna juggle the lock and take it with them. That's who you have to be suing. Verdict in this case for the defendant. So, the judge determines the plaintiff sued the wrong party. That's a surprise. What are you thinking? I, I think it was the wrong decision because the property, he didn't make uh, ex uh, exclusive effort to put a lock over the gate until two days later, okay? He should have did that in the beginning when his tenant notified him that the lock was missing from well, the gate. You know, the judge listened to your testimony and decided, no, he was, he's not on the hook for this. It's the tenant. That's who you got to sue. 
Well, I, I know you're unhappy. Yeah, I mean, the property owner should, you know, make right. sh sh uh, sh sh sure that everything is right. You well, know, I'm sorry for you, but that's the way it is. Okay. okay? You right. lost the case. Sorry, yeah. sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. Fong. Did you? Whoa. <laughs> Yo, I right. did a split. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not good, right? Well, I'm, I'm flexible. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Uh, so what do you think of the outcome? I think it was just. I think that's exactly what we were saying. It was, um, we never said, we always took um, control of whenever we heard it. Well, Even to Mr. Jackson, we told him just give us what our right. negligence was. You, you're still there. He's still there. You're all still good to get along, right? I don't even know him. You don't even know him. No. Well, you do now. No, I do now. Okay. So. Thank you very All much. Right, thank you. All right. You must sign some documents. Okay, Harvey. So this is kind of interesting, Doug. The manager of the apartment cannot be responsible for the bad actions of a tenant unless the manager was unnoticed, should have done something and didn't. But normally, if the manager isn't involved, the manager is not responsible.